All right, beautiful people, here we go again. We're on day two of our review. Remember, this review is for our final exam. Let's do this. Remember, try to answer the questions by yourself and then listen to the video for an explanation. Otherwise, if you're just gonna listen to the video, you're not doing yourself any good for the, for the final. Please try to own your own learning and do what you think is best to help you to learn the material, okay? Now, this is a review. Let's read this. Use the reading and your knowledge to answer the question. An enzyme is a molecule that increases the speed of biochemical reactions. Enzymes hold molecules close together and in the correct orientation so that the molecules do not have to depend on the random collision to react. Digestive enzymes are secreted along the gastrointestinal tract, that's our, our uh, esophagus, and break down large molecules, enabling nutrients to be absorbed into the bloodstream for various uses, bodily functions. Now, describe the use of an enzyme, okay? Describe the use of an enzyme. They speed up reactions according to the text, right? According to the text, they speed up reactions. That's simple, okay? Now, oh, now, okay, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to move, I'm gonna move this up. Now, Describe the enzyme. Just draw the enzyme. Let me, do, let me delete that so that disappears. Draw the enzyme that is able to digest the substrate shown below and the possible products of the reaction. Let's look at the picture up here, okay? Look at the enzyme. And this is the substrate. Hold the phone. This is the substrate, okay? So the enzyme looks like this. So let's draw an enzyme that, that will match this, this site. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I just want you to get the idea, right, of how it would fit. Now, what kind of products? Now, this is the, now this is the enzyme. It's going to go E, N, Z. What kind of products would it? Look, look, look at the products up here, okay? It's, it's almost like this part gets cleaved off. So we're gonna have something that looks like this and something that looks like, okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. You get two products, right? Now, what do you call it when you go from a big product to two small products? Come on, Jermaine, what's your favorite word here? Hydrolysis, right on, way to go, Jermaine. I can hear you now saying it. If this time you actually finally got it right. All right, let's go on to the next one. Remember, enzymes depend on, they function, their function depends on proper temperature and proper pH. So let's clear this out. And go down to the next one. Explain the importance of enzyme maintaining its specific shape even after it has acted on it on the substrate. Okay, well, enzymes retain shape so that they can act again. Remember, the shape determines, well, what are we doing here? Oh my goodness gracious, can we, stretch, can we stretch this out maybe? The shape determines function. So if the enzyme loses its shape, I'll go, can I, if the enzyme loses its shape, it won't be able to do its job, okay? so. Remember, enzymes don't disappear. They just stay the same. 
They bind, they let go, they bind, they let go. And they, they need the same shape so that it can act on the same substrate again and again and again. The shape determines function. If the shape changes because of temperature and it like the temperature heats it up and it like melts, you know, the, the, and it changes its shape, it's not going to be able to bind and do it. The active site, you know what? That's right. The active site remains the same to be to be active. <laughs> okay, good enough. Now, can I move this? No, I don't think I can. I wanna, I can. All right, cool. So, state the optimal temperature and pH for the enzyme described in the graphs below. Now, let's, let's can I make this bigger? Oh, I hate that. I want, I want to make it bigger for you guys, but I can't. Oh my God. Uh, okay. I like this. Clear the drawings. I'm sorry, I had to clear the drawings again. You know what's it? Oh my goodness. So there it is. Is that too big? State the optimal temperature and pH for the enzyme described in the graphs below. This is a graph. Enzyme activity is in the y axis, pH is on the x axis. Temperature x-axis, enzyme activity, y-axis. So we have like a, a, a graph of the um, graph of the, of, the P, of the enzyme activity changing based on the pH. When is that the highest? I think you guessed it, right? Eight. Fair enough. When is the over here, when is the temperature optimal for maximum enzyme activity? We find the top of the graph, go down, it is 40. Okay, you will probably have a question like this on the exam. Be sure you be sure you're able to identify the y and x axis to determine maximum, I mean, optimal temperature and pH. All right, beautiful. I think that's all for the do now. Yes, I will see you guys in a bit. Remember, do the next section on your own and then try to, and then listen to the video. Remember, these are gonna count towards your final exam.